Hello and welcome to our Thursday Reflection. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 14, and beginning to read at the 43rd verse. Just as Jesus was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing nearby drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. And as always, we thank God for his word. It does seem somewhat strange in October to be asked to reflect on a passage which seems more suitable for Easter than autumn. However, as we consider that passage, I want to compare and contrast two people, Judas and the unnamed young man who flees naked in the final verses. First of all, Judas Iscariot. Over the centuries, many theologians have tried to account for Judas's actions during that time that we refer to as Holy Week. How could someone who had spent so long with Jesus betray him? St John, in his Gospel, says that Judas claimed to be angry when Mary used expensive perfume to anoint Jesus because he said that the perfume should have been sold and the money given to him ready to give on to the poor. But John says that he was being hypocritical, that Judas was really a thief and just wanted the money under his control so he could dip his hand in. Others have tried to explain Judas's actions by suggesting that he, he was angry because Jesus had made it clear that there would be no um, thrones on this earth for his disciples. Whilst others suggest that he did it with good intentions trying to force Jesus into a declaration that he was the Messiah and that he would restore the kingdom to Israel. Whatever may be the case, we see someone who has been with Jesus for three years, who has just had his feet washed by his Lord and has shared a meal, which we call the Last Supper, then betray Jesus with a kiss for 30 pieces of silver. I wonder, do we ever unknowingly betray our Lord? I hope not. I pray that I never do so. But I do need to be careful that I always keep my priorities right and am faithful to what I believe and what he has taught. But let's think of those two final verses. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Who is this young man? Why was he wearing only a linen garment? And why is he mentioned at all? He's only referred to here in Mark's Gospel. Even though Matthew and Luke base their Gospels on Mark's records, 
they omit these verses. Well, tradition has it that that young man was John Mark himself. Now, actually, that makes sense. We hear in Acts that the Jerusalem church met in the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. So he was obviously someone who knew Jesus. He was very young, probably overawed. He would have wanted to be one of the disciples close to Jesus, but too young, too inexperienced. He had to wait for his calling. But maybe after the Last Supper, maybe he was even there. We know it wasn't only the Twelve. Maybe he then followed them out at a distance, having been told to go to bed by his mother, only wrapped in a linen garment now, and followed his hero, Jesus. If he did so, it would also answer another problem in the scriptures, in the texts, because maybe it was John Mark who heard Jesus praying in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, whilst we know the other disciples were asleep. So what part does John Mark play? We have seen the musical Camelot. At the end, there's going to be a big battle and King Arthur knows that he will be killed. A young boy arrives, determined to fight to the death for his king. But Arthur says, no, you have a more important function to fulfil, not dying with me on a battlefield, but running away in order that you will be able to write down all that has happened and tell that once there was a spot that was known as Camelot. Well, that, of course, is fiction. But I imagine that this is what God wanted of that young man. He ran away because rather than dying with Jesus or being imprisoned for a long time, it was more important that he should flee so that he could record all that had happened and give us a gospel to proclaim. Our calling may not always be easy to understand. Others may even misjudge it. But God calls us all to do what he knows that we can do best. So let us pray. Father, guard us from any temptation to knowingly or unknowingly betray or deny our Lord. And give us discernment to choose the best way to follow you and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may God bless you and keep you safe until we meet again.